Hey guys, welcome to Hey, it's Donna. If you're new, my name is Donna. If not, welcome back. The countdown has finally begun. I will be flying to Tokyo and Kyoto in two months. I'm so excited. There was a little bit of an update. We'll actually be in Osaka for a day before we go to Kyoto the next morning. If there's anyone that has gone to Osaka before, please let me know if there's one must thing I have to do in Osaka before going to Kyoto. I know some of you guys watched my video of tips on what to wear in Japan in April. If you haven't, don't forget to watch. Watch it. I know some of you guys have commented in that video asking if I can do a video on any updated travel restrictions or any information to prepare for your trip. First, I want to put a disclaimer out there that the last time I did travel to Japan was in October 2019, right before COVID. So I'm sure there's a lot of new updates and a lot of changes. In this video, I'll share some of my research tips that I'll be using as a reference when I fly out this April. If you've recently gone to Japan, please comment down below and share some of your tips and experience. So let's get into this video. What you should do to prepare before heading to the airport. Let's get into the basics. Make sure you have your plane ticket, your passport, and your wallet with some cash or some yen if you already did an exchange. I personally like to do the exchange here if I can, just because I have a better rate with my bank. I exchange about $500 in yen just to have in my wallet. You can exchange your currency at the airport when you arrive. So I would check with your bank to see the exchange rate, also how much they charge for any transactions when you're there. Because I know with certain banks and credit cards, they do charge a transaction fee when you spend money internationally. So double check. Another recommendation of mine is to print out your Airbnb address or hotel stay just so you have it on paper to give to your taxi driver or you're asking for directions. The last Last thing you want to do is scramble on your phone trying to look for the address you might not have wi-fi i personally always print it out because i have a fear either my phone is dying or i don't have wi-fi so i don't want to be stuck Definitely print it out if you want to be as prepared as me next i would call your phone provider and see what kind of international plans they offer for instance i'm with at&t they offer ten dollars a day for data calls pretty much everything you can use your phone you don't have to stop anywhere and get a sim card it's all set for you you can also get a sim card at the airport when you arrive but they usually cost about 3,000 yen which is about 23 dollars usd and you could set a monthly plan which can range about 12 dollars to 23 dollars a month but just make sure your phone is unlocked before you try to get a sim card there if you do have the iphone 14 you would have to get a e-sim which will only allow you to use mobile data it doesn't include mobile calls or a local phone number but you can make calls using other apps. An eSIM costs about $6 to $60 a week depending on your mobile plan. Lastly, call your credit card company to inform them about your travel dates just to avoid any temporary suspension. Like I said, if you don't have Wi-Fi service for some reason or your phone is dead and your card is being declined because of your travels, it's just a lot more work. This will just help avoid any unlucky situations. What are the new COVID restrictions? Currently, Japan requires you to be fully vaccinated, meaning a total of three shots. Your initial two shots and plus a booster. If you receive Johnson & Johnson, it counts for two, but you still need a booster. Those who are not vaccinated will require to take a pre-travel COVID test. You would need more than just your at-home COVID test to fly. It will be best to have it documented by your health provider or a clinic that offers a PCR test. A negative result must show that the sample was skinned no more than 48 hours. Sorry guys, I meant no more than 72 hours prior to your departure date. Some places will offer to email you the results, but print one out just in case. Some airlines may request a printed copy. Depending on where you get your test, make sure your results will come in time before your flight. Most airports will have a place where you can make an appointment to get a same day rapid PCR test. Generally, it will take about two hours, but it will be more costly and requires you to be at the airport a few hours before your departure. Children under 18 traveling with a fully vaccinated guardian are exempted from the vaccine requirement for Entry. If the guardian is not vaccinated, they need to show a negative pre-COVID test.
what apps will be helpful. I would definitely recommend checking this site. This will help register for a fast track experience. The video I watched showed that there will be three points upon exiting the airport in Japan. One is quarantine, two is immigration, and three is customs. When you're done registering and filling out the forms, you will now be able to present a QR code. There'll be three QR codes for each of those exit points. You must be ready to show a valid vaccination certificate or a pre-departure negative test. Google Translate. I found this app helpful when I'm shopping for products that are listed all in Japanese. Some of them don't even have pictures. Also looking at menus or utilizing certain amenities in Japanese instructions. For instance, when I'm in the Airbnb and I'm trying to use the washer machine, I know there's instructions, but all the buttons and everything is in Japanese. I'll use the app to go over and make sure I'm doing it right. Another important app is Google Maps. I use this daily when I'm in Japan to map out my destination for the day. It also provides pretty accurate train schedules, transfers. It also shows you the cost so I know how much I need to put on my card. Next, the Pasmo and Swinka card. So these are the two main cards that you'll be using to board the trains. You can download both cards to your wallet if you have an iPhone. I'm not sure about Androids, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. When you're traveling around the city, the last thing you want to do is pull out your card or look through your wallet. I find it easy easier just to scan with my phone or my iWatch when I'm going. Airbnb app if you're staying in an Airbnb. This is just an easy way to connect to your host if you have any questions. If you're traveling with friends or a bigger group or with family, I suggest getting a location app. I have an iPhone, my fiance has an Android, my brother has an Android, my mom has an iPhone. I personally use Life360 so we can separate or quickly meet up if we wanted to. What medications are prohibited to bring into Japan? Be aware that specific medication could be illegal in Japan and could put you at risk for arrest even with a US valid prescription. Most over-the-counter medicine are legal to bring such as Tylenol, Aspirin, Claritin, Tums, Advil, and generic versions. However, medications such as Claritin D, which contains I'm not gonna even try to say it, <laughs> are strictly forbidden. So I suggest check before you go. I'll provide a link in the description box where you can go and check a list of all the medication or medical devices that are prohibited in Japan without a certificate. Travelers who need to bring more than the MLHW's approved quantity of medication or medical devices should obtain a important certificate before traveling and present it with the prescription to a custom officer upon arrival in Japan. What items should you bring to make your flight as comfortable as it can be? These are my suggestions and it's also based on personal preference but I wanted to share some of my essentials that I'll be bringing on my 11 hour flight. Bring a pen for any paperwork you may need to fill out. Bring a neck pillow and an eye mask. This is the best neck support travel pillow I've purchased. It looks silly but it works. Dramamine if you're like me and are prone to getting nauseous on a flight. Headphones, preferably noise cancelling ones to help tune out the flight noise. The ones that are provided from the airlines are never that great. Comfortable socks, slippers, or compression socks. I like to bring a pair of thick cozy socks to keep my feet warm. Pums for any digestive problems. Advil or Tylenol to relieve headaches or any pains. Bring your favorite snacks, just enough for the flight durations. No need to overdo it because Japan has so many snacks you're gonna wanna try. Facial wipes so you can quickly freshen up if you need to. Melatonin to help you sleep and also to help with the time adjustment to avoid jet lag. Some entertainment like a book, Nintendo Switch, an iPad, or anything to keep you busy for the long flight. A portable battery charger and charging cables in case you need to charge with your phone or anything else. I always pack some gum because my fiance always has a hard time popping his ears on flights. Earplugs if you're sensitive to noise. A water canister to stay hydrated. Transporting luggage. It is known that using public transportation could be a little challenging when you're lugging large or multiple baggage around, especially when elevators are hard to come by. I have yet to book a luggage service since I personally like to keep my belongings with me. Also, it helps me pack lighter knowing that I have to lug it around. But if you're traveling with family or for an event or whatever reason and would rather book a service, here are some tips for you. Getting luggage service upon your arrival in Japan. 
there are several delivery companies available when you arrive in the lobby of any airport in Japan. Definitely check in with your hotel if you intend to have your luggage delivery there. Just because some smaller hotels might not be able to accommodate due to the lack of storage space, you can use most of these services without a reservation. They would just need your contact information, the hotel name, or the stay address, and your payment. Make sure to have your travel essentials, your toiletry, change of clothes, or a sweater or jacket if it gets cold with you before checking in your luggage. Baggage delivery may arrive same day depending on the distance and if so typically in the evenings around 5 p.m. but it can also take up to two days depending on how far your location of stay is. Some companies offer express options but at a higher cost. Once you arrive at your hotel present your luggage receipt to the front desk just so they know to expect your luggage and if you're having it sent somewhere else just make sure that your home or somebody's there to receive the delivery. If you're traveling to multiple cities and you want to use the luggage service, you can call ahead or book online. You can also visit a convenience store, train station, or the designated fronts that offer baggage service. If you're departing from your hotel, you can ask the staff to help arrange the luggage boarding service. By booking their services, you can specify the date, the time, and the location to which you like to have your bags delivered. Luggage can be held up to seven days before delivery. The cost really depends on the size of your baggage and transport service. Usually can range between a thousand yen, which is eight dollars USD, to five thousand yen, which is thirty-nine dollars in USD per item. These are my luggage that I will be bringing. It might differ from what you may need since I will be taking my filming equipment and my laptop to edit while I'm there. First, I'm taking my backpack. I opted for a bigger one. This is the one I got. It fits my 16 inch laptop plus any entertainment and things that I will need to have a comfortable flight. And this will be my carry on. I'm also packing a duffel bag. I will be folding this into my suitcase to fill with souvenirs and snacks to bring back and this will be my second check-in bag on the way back home and trust me I will be doing a lot of shopping. I got the suitcase on my last trip because I over shopped. We ended up buying a suitcase I believe the store was Don Quixote. It is a big chain where you can find anything. Japan has tons of markets and stores that offer luggage so fear not if you get stuck in the same situation. They have many options sizes and the prices are pretty reasonable. I think we got ours around 50 bucks. I will be bringing my travel sling. I'm not a huge fan of wearing purses, especially when I'm traveling. I like my hands free to have quick accessibility to what I need on the go. Smaller bags are just easier to keep organized. And again, you're only bringing what you need instead of just random stuff you're throwing in there. Things to pack that will be hard to find in Japan. Deodorant. It's not easy to find. If you're someone that uses deodorant on the daily, I suggest bringing one. Japan's version of deodorant is more of a perfume that covers up the smell rather than prevents them. Tampons. Although many pad options are available to find in Japan, I've personally rarely seen tampons sold there. If you prefer tampons rather than pads, then I suggest bringing what you're comfortable using. Toothpaste. And this is just a personal preference because you can find toothpaste there, but they're all Japanese brands. You won't find Crest or Colgate. Larger sizes in clothes and shoes. Japanese sizes typically just run smaller and they don't seem to offer a lot of size selections above a size six to eight. I'm sure there are companies and brands that do offer larger sizes. You'll see a lot of sizes that say one size on it and the fit will differ depending on the style or the brand. So either the one size fits you or it doesn't. And I feel like the one size concept will fit between a size two to a size six. So not a lot of range there. To give you an idea, my fiance, he's typically a medium or large US size, but over there, He's definitely a large or extra large depending on the brand and how he wants to style it. I'm a US 2 to 4 and in Japan, I'm typically a medium in most of the stores there. Here's an extra packing tip. 
to stay organized. List out what you're going to be packing in your check luggage. Include toiletries, outfits. Create a separate list for your carry-on. Include your entertainment, snacks, charging cables, and anything to make your flight comfortable as it can be. This way, you can check off while you're packing to make sure you have all the essential things with you. And it's never too early to start making that list. Check with your airport on items that meet TSA security measures, especially liquids or medication you might need to bring. Portable battery chargers and power banks are not accepted in checked-in baggage. You must carry them on. So we reached the end. I hope you guys found this video helpful and got some good tips to prepare you on your travels. If you've recently gone to Japan, please comment down below and share some of your tips and experience with us. I'll probably do a pack with me video next month along with recommended activities. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And then comment down below for any video suggestions. Until next time, I hope you have the best day of your life. Bye!